Hi, um, I'm creating this video for my uh, UFP uh, A60 model uh, brake actuator. It went on uh, the Ranger trailer that I had, Ranger Trail. And um, I've taken it apart several times, and there's some things that uh, I haven't seen in the other videos that are out there. Uh, most of the other videos do a, a fairly decent job, but there are some parts that I have found that, um, that it doesn't fully explain. So anyway, I'm making this video to um, help others and maybe for to document it for myself. My actuator is uh, uh, can be removed from the Ranger trailer. It uh, there's the actuator itself, and then there's this long pipe that uh, runs the length of it. These two pins uh, go into the trailer so that uh, you know the whole unit is uh, supported there. On the back end of this unit is um, this is the um, for the reverse. When you go uh, to back up, you connect in your uh, uh, backup lights to the plug, and when you put it in reverse, it, this actuates, and there's a tube that runs from from here all the way up the length of this thing and connects into the back of the actuator itself. It's this tube here, and it just plugs in to that, and it's held on with a um, uh, tie wrap on there. And then this is the uh, the connector itself. This is the front of my trailer, and that long tube just slides in here, and it runs the whole length of this. And then the holes that I showed you earlier, uh, they line up with the holes in here, and these pins drop down through there. And then on the back side here are the connectors for the brake line and the um, hydraulics. I'm sorry, the brake line and the uh, electronics. Uh, this unit is the the actuator itself that goes inside of this unit. And what I have done is I have removed it, but I have put all the pins and everything back in place so that you can see how it operates. This normally rides against the top of this. This is the, this is the bolt here that is sliding back and forth in here. And then this bolt here goes through here to um, allow this, un this unit to slide back and forth. So when you step on the brake, in your car, in your tow vehicle, the whole brake, uh, the whole trailer wants to slide forward. And when it does, it compresses, it, it pushes this piece in. And this slides, and you'll see when I turn this over, that this piece in here is actually moving. And this is, this is the, the piston that pushes, if I can, I don't know if I'm strong enough to do that, anyway, that, that piston is like stepping on the brake. It actually pushes this, this uh, piston inside the master cylinder, which is like stepping on the brake, which sends hydraulic fluid out the back end here, and that goes out the brake lines and into the, uh, the, the wheels, either the drum brakes or the disc brakes. So that's basically how that works. This is um, an extra strong spring so that when you step on the brakes, you only want to push the brakes in so hard. If you push them in really hard, it'll lock the wheels up. So that's what this is. This is just feedback to the whole mechanism. This part here is the uh, breakaway cable. And when you, um, uh, if your trailer breaks the chains and breaks everything else on the front of this, if for any reason it comes it becomes dislodged from the um, tow vehicle, then this cable, which you had attached somewhere to the back of your tow vehicle, will pull. It will pull the, um, through the through the length of this thing, and then it comes in underneath the back, this little piece right here on the master cylinder, and comes forward and hooks into this piece here. And then this piece here, this cable is actually pulling on that piece. I don't want to pull too hard on this because this cable is so frayed. That's why I'm replacing it. Uh, it's got these little pieces of wire that come out of there. It's all frayed. Anyway, it, it pushes down on this piston. This push and does, piston does the, exactly the same thing as if your trailer brakes uh, were applied. It applies the brakes. It locks the wheels on the trailer and uh, it breaks away and it doesn't go careening into traffic. Hopefully it'll go off into a ditch someplace. And when I first got this boat and trailer, I had uh, removed the tongue from the uh, hitch ball and I had removed the chains, but I forgot to take away 
the safety line here, the breakaway cable, and I started the car, and let me tell you, this thing works. <laughs> it works great. So, um, and another part of this is that in, in normal use, there's a, a little, there's this ball that's here, and then there's this little tab, that little clip that's on there. And what that does is it prevents the ball from coming through this little hole here. Uh, but if you were to, if your trailer was to break away, what would happen is, is that the cable will pull so pull so hard, it would break that tab off of there, and that button, that little round ball, would come right through this hole. And trust me, it did that time that um, I forgot to disconnect it. It came through just fine and locked the brakes up on the trailer. So I just wanted to show you what this looks like um, when it's outside of the main unit here. Um, as I said before, mine is uh, removable from my boat. So I just have to pull a couple pins out here and the whole thing slides out of the trailer itself, giving me all this extra room to play with when I park inside. Um, so um, I also want to say that uh, this thing is loaded with uh, brake fluid. No matter how many times I've taken this apart and drained it, uh, brake fluid continues to come out of it. So when you're working with this, make sure you have plenty of rags. Um, I drained as much as I could, but um, as I said, more of it uh, just seems to be coming out. Anyway, this is the unit that sits inside of the outer shell here. And this uh, rubber hose runs the length and comes out the back and hooks into a uh, little connector uh, back here on the rear end and there's it's uh, just um, friction feed and then there's a um, uh, tie wrap that's on the end of that. I have reassembled this thing so that you can see what it looks like in its entirety so that's why there's some extra room in here. Normally these bolts, these two big ones here, are on the sides here. This is the uh, master cylinder and so I have drained all of the brake fluid out of there, but I can still see a little bit in there, which is probably why it keeps coming out. Uh, and that fits inside there. These are the wheels. N normally, this all comes apart. When you, when you take these bolts out of the side here, these two major bolts, when you slide this thing out of here, all these parts are going to come falling out. So it's good that you, it, it's important that you know how this comes together on here. So, uh, again, these are the wheels that rotate on the top because it's sitting, there's weight that's sitting down there, so they're steel wheels. This is a master cylinder that needs to slide in and out, and it has just regular nylon wheels on the back of it. So that whole piece slides like that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take these bolts out of here now, and you can see how the parts come out. So I'm going to take out the front one, and what's going to happen is, is these two metal parts, wheels, are going to come out, and the master cylinder is going to be uh, hooked in by this back one, but the um, there's a damping, dampening shock that's, as your vehicle pulls forward, um, of course the master cylinder is going to disengage, and if you don't have the shock absorber here, it's going to go BAM! You're going to hear this large, loud noise because um, it's the shock absorber isn't working at all. It's just allowing the whole thing to to expand and it's a big clunk. So if, it, if it's doing that, then you need to replace this piston in here. And it's and we're going to take this apart now so you can see how that actually um, comes out of there. Um, I've already taken, there's a, a washer and a lock ring on this. And if you don't have a lock ring tool, then I suggest you invest in one. It's been very handy for me. This one's made by a channel lock. I've had it for many years, and it just, it's just so easy to put one on or to take it off. Sure beats fighting with a screwdriver and a hammer. So the, these would already, remember, we're working with this thing outside. Normally, all this would be inside with the pins and everything. As soon as you take these pins out, things are going to start to fall apart. So the first thing that's going to happen is that these wheels are going to come out on you. And these are the steel ones. Okay, 
So now that those two are out, now the shock absorber in here is free. But in order to get it out, we need to take out the back bolt as well. So when that comes out, then you have these wheels, these nylon wheels in the back. Move that cable a little bit so we can get this tip moved. All right, so these are just nylon wheels, and if you look at them, you'll see that one side is shorter than the other one. And those two short sides go on the inside of the master cylinder, just like that. You see a little indentation here, they go right there on each side, and once you get those in there, then it's kind of a juggling act to get it back inside and to get that piston inside where it goes in here. All right, so that's the nylon wheels. All right, our, our master cylinder is free. We've now got enough cable free and the wheels off and the bolts off so that we can take this wire. Now well, that's just all I got on that. So we can bring this up and out and forward and now we can get enough here to where we can slide this collar off. We take that off and that little ball just slides out the big hole. All right, and if you want to remove the cable, this just comes right down through here. Now I've already replaced this master cylinder once and on mine, this I had to hammer this one through. I think I'm going to drill this out a little bit on this little angle bolt, but that's the way that master cylinder comes, that that, that one comes through there. Anyway, so I'm not going to Take that off right now but to get the piston off there's one bolt that comes off here now, on this you have to be careful because there is a sleeve that is inside of here don't lose that sleeve or you have to buy that again separately all right and if you wanted to replace this piston as well because this spring was worn or broken or rusted or destroyed that's real easy all you have to do is just take this little collar little rubber collar off just pop right up and then that thing comes out and I believe you get the collar when you replace it it's it's the whole thing all at one time like that and to put it back on is just almost like a, a plunger just put that back on so now we've got that all apart you should not have to take this front part off for any reason um, I did, and I'm not sure why. It comes off the same way as the others. There's a, a little clip and this bolt, and it's the same thing on the other side. This clip also holds on the, um, the little pin there to keep the lid locked down. But I got a little confused when I took it apart because there's this spring right there that is on the edge of this bolt that comes through. And what that spring does is it keeps the lid here open when there's no... When, when the trailer is not on the hitch ball, it locks it down, locks it open. And um, so that's what that spring is on there for. When I put this thing back together, um, direction of the, of the spring was important. Um, but I'm trying to think of an easy way to describe this. If you think of the two ends of the spring... They will be coming off of the top in this direction. And if I can get the light shining down in there. Let's see. There. Way down there on the right hand side. At the edge of the spring. You'll see that the shorter end. There's a long end and a short end. The, long, the short end goes underneath that tab. That holds the thing open. There's this little tab right here in the very center of it. It holds that spring holds that tab open in that position. The the other part just goes down here on this. This is where the long end is. So the e the easiest way I found when I put the bolt back in the side, I put it in just enough to get through the side and to um, connect this piece here. Then I put the spring with the short tab. I can find it again. Well, this is up with my light. Right there. 
there's, you'll see that there's, there's just a little hole down in there and that, that spring went in there. And then the other end of the spring, it just goes underneath this, this whole bottom here. And then when I got that in place, then I pushed this bolt through the side a little further and got it on the spring. And then I pushed it through to the other side and out the other side and, and put the, everything back, put the little washer and put the little uh, locking clip back on it again. And thanked my lucky stars that I didn't mess with it too much. Uh, the other thing that's a little bit difficult, and you will have to work with that, is this shaft. Uh, yeah, now let's see if I can get the light in there. Now, if you can see down inside there, there is the bracket that sits in that, as well as the hole that's in the back there. And you got to get that bracket lined up. Anyway, the the now you can see it just there's just barely on these two little corners here. You can see that little metal tabs and if you can see those through there that's how you know you've, you've got it in there correctly the piston that is on this this piston here has to go through this hole but it also has to go through that metal piece that is up in there and then there's this little spring that's right here and as, as best as I was able to figure out that spring right there has to stay in the back of this piece so when you have to put when you put the piston back in again it has to go through the hole in the back it has to go through the metal piece and go forward and it'll it'll be visible in here and that piston uh, this hole here is so that you can reset the um, master cylinder. I have to see how this comes out. I'm not too sure. I've put it on a on a tripod so I could have my hands free. But this has to go in here. The wheels have to be on the back. So you're, you're juggling with the wheels and you're juggling with this piece here. You get those. Remember the pins. They have to be one and one in there. And then this goes in. You get that started and you can get your wheels. Remember the shallow side shallow side goes on the inside of the master cylinder and then you can start squeezing it in a little bit done this about a dozen times today and it has always been pretty easy to go in of course now that I'm trying to film it for the umpteenth time because of my stupid camera doesn't want to cooperate Finally making some progress. Of course, my wheels are out now. And get that on that side. There we go. Ta-da! There. Now it's all the way in. Of course, um, you have to make sure that, um, like I said, the the piston is in there. And the piston will will be. Drop my little sleeve. 
it will be there, but you have to make sure that it's going to line up with these bolts that come in on the side before you start squeezing them. So extend it a little bit, make it a little bit of an adjustment, and then um, when the bolts go in, of course the wheels have to go in. Um, and one other thing is that while you're putting all this together, don't forget that you're putting it into the the outside piece. So the bolts won't even go in until you get everything lined up and in there. So we'll be doing that a little bit later so you can see how difficult that is. And I pinched the daylights out of myself on that lid there. I accidentally tripped that lever. So anyway, I'm waiting on my cable. It should be here in a couple more days. It's coming all the way from uh, Pacific Trailers out in uh, California. And um, it's probably going to be about midweek before it gets here of next week. And today is Thursday. So it's probably going to be here Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. It's a few days after I made that first video, and uh, I expected this to take about five or six days, but Pacific Trailer sent this out to me pretty quickly. I was very surprised. Um, this cable is different than the original one. The original one had a ball on the end of it, and this one, as you can see, has like, I don't know, little wings or something, little tabs. has an edge to it. And uh, the first thing I noticed was that it won't fit through this hole here. The hole was built for that ball and it would not it just it sticks in there. So what I did was I took a little I took a rat tail file and I did the edges here, not all around it but just the edges so I could get those little tabs passed there. And now that seems to work. And it fits in there just nice, very nicely. Uh, I didn't want to shave down these edges, which would have been easier, but it has to go inside of this new bracket that they gave me. And I was afraid that if I shaved off anything, it wouldn't work inside the bracket. It would pop out of there at the worst possible moment. The original was this little piece here. It slipped over the edge of it, and then the cable went into here, and there was another ball on the end of it down there, and um, that kept it from coming out. But apparently it's a design change. It didn't work so well. So what we need to do is, and I apologize for the noise. It's, I'm standing on one of these wonderful Harbor Freight step stools. But we need to go, let me find my pointer here. something I can point with. Of course it's going to go through the hole right here and then we're going to go down through these two rollers or pins or whatever they are. We have to go down through there and then let's see if this light will help. That does not help. Anyway, there's there's like a little tab that's down inside of here. You just need to go on one side of that or the other, probably the left-hand side, the same as the hole here. And when it goes down past that, there's this pin that's on the side. And you have to get your cable down past this pin. And on top of this roller. And then it'll feed down into the bottom down there. So we're going to do that. And then uh, I'll flip the unit over here, the actuator over, and I'll show you how it attaches on the inside. So I wasn't able to do it because I don't have enough hands. So I'll just have to explain what I've done. And so we went through the hole. And then we went between the two rollers. All right, follow that's the noise again. And then we're looking through the side where this, this, this pin goes. And you can see the cable coming down through there. There it is. And it's going over that, that pin. Now that's going to be a difficult part that when we have to put all this stuff back inside the um, outer shell 
that the pin will have to make sure that it goes, that the cable goes over the top of that pin. So as I said, we got a, a new bracket that goes on here. Here's the old one with the slot and this one with the new slot and the angle. And um, we're gonna put that on. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and, and reassemble some of these areas. So we got our little sleeve that goes inside here. Our bolt goes inside the sleeve, and screws into the master cylinder. And I'm just going to do these finger tight for now, no other reason. do it I want you to be able to see what I'm doing okay the um, the new sleeve let's see yep so the cable comes in So as I said earlier, the cable goes through a little hole in the front, it goes between the two rollers, and then it goes, at, at, in this position it's going underneath this pin here. And then it'll come out, and we look down inside and we can see that, let me get it right here, the cable comes out here. They weren't very clear on their instructions, so I'm coming up here and going through this way, and then it connects into this sleeve. Now you have to have the, the cable pushed in as far as it'll go in here to have some room to work, and so you have to take the, of course, the master cylinder out, and then you have to slide this little, you have to slide the cable inside of this bracket through the big hole and slide it down here. And then you put the bracket over the, the plunger, the piston here. And then you take the whole thing, put your wheels back on the ends here and lift it up. We already put the um, shock absorber, there it is. Uh, we bolted it on there. And we brought it up and put the pin here through the sides here. I don't have the wheels in right now. And then you shove the whole thing inside of this bracket here, which they call the push bracket. And remember, you got to have your little pins showing up in here. And I found it helps to push down on this as you're trying to insert this. Push down kind of hard, wiggle it have the back end here lifted up and then the whole thing will go in there a little bit easier. According to the picture, and this is the picture, get right side up. That's how it says it's supposed to go in. So I've come as close to that as possible. I have routed the cable along the side. And I have to do something with the way it comes in. It does not want to go easily down this side here, and I'm not real happy with it. Um, I do have to get it back into this little slot here, which is my least favorite thing to do about this. Got the wheel on that side. Got the wheel on this side. Got it in, yay, all right. I'm gonna put the pin in to hold the wheels in place. All right, and then, that's good, that's tight. 
Got to put these wheels in. Make sure the shock absorber lines up. Alright, so we're checking the cable, make sure that it routes over the top of this front pin here, which it does. And um, this is going to have to be smushed in here. I can't think of any other way to do this. And it was kind of that way, but it, it on the other cable, but it was a little bit thinner, I think. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure that it didn't get pinched here and it went under, it goes down along here, up over the top. And then it's coming down along this side here, and it comes out this front piece here. And I'll put that clip on it when I get done, because I don't want to destroy the clip. But I think that's it. Oh, one thing I didn't change on mine, it had a, an S um, attachment, and I have swapped that out for this because I've had that little S clip fall off, and then the whole thing dragged, and it tore up my uh, the cable, and I don't want that to happen again. Uh, they have added it like a black shield on the outside of this, but I wanted something that would clip on, so that's, that is one change I have made to it. I've got the pins in to hold it temporarily. I got to slide it in here. I got to get my uh, rubber hose down the side, or down the down the length of this. And I'm going to turn him over now and try to slide him in there as best as I can. first Take off his back pin, and we have to hold everything together in there because the wheels are now on top because we've turned it around. So let's hope it all stays together. I gotta put my hand underneath it for support and slide it in there. Checking this cable routing again. It, uh, get the whole unit in there. Make sure our cable's routed properly. They stay together this time. Fill them in there. Oh, we gotta take out this pin. Hold those wheels in. After you've slid the um, actuator on the inside of the sleeve unit here, uh, before you put the bolts in, make sure that you uh, hook up the um, brake line. On the, on the back of the master cylinder again because you don't have any room if you put those bolts in. So hook that up first and then um, put your your bolts in, your pins, and put the clips back on it again. And if you have this hydraulic line on the back, what I did with mine was I put fluid in the master cylinder and then I had this off with a cup underneath and I just let it bleed out until it started running out of this hose so I know that that hose is filled with brake fluid now 
it's actually leaking a little bit. Uh, so the other thing I need to do is put a little tie wrap on there to make that sleeve nice and tight. And then I think that the only thing left is, like I said, do the brake bleed. And um, I'll show you in a minute that there's a way to reach through that hole in the bottom on our favorite tab and push the brake master cylinder uh, piston backwards so you can actually pump fluid through it. And I'm going to find some way to maybe hold this open, get a little pin down in there, maybe a little piece of nylon or a little stick or something to let the pressure off. And then when the brake fluid comes through there, then it should be, it should not have any more air on the inside. And you just have to make sure you keep filling up the master cylinder here with, with the brake fluid. You don't want to introduce more air into the system. I'm not sure where my rubber hose is down here, but I got the pins back in, so that's looking good so far. So I've got a retaining a clip and the washer on that side. I'm going to put it on this side so I don't lose it. So we got our cable in, we got our two pins in, the wheels, yep, make sure we got two wheels there, and that looks good. We put our little, if I get that a little closer, our little C-clamp here, and its purpose is to prevent you from accidentally pulling that out or even a little bit of um, tension on that, uh, because if it does do that then this will put pressure through the lines and it'll activate the brakes and they'll just drag and um, I've actually had that happen a couple of times it's not fun and I got my line in here so the only thing left to do is to bleed it um, and I really wasn't going to record anything about bleeding brakes with this unit you Pop open the cap here, put your brake fluid in, and then uh, you have to do more or less a, a bench bleed on the very bottom of this, that little hole that we saw before with our favorite pin here. Um, you can put your screwdriver in there, actually this one is a little bit narrower, and you can, you can pump that. And it'll, it's just like stepping on the brakes, and you can pump the hydraulic fluid through the system uh, and it'll come up to this line here eventually. Um, you have to pop that open a little bit. Use a, something soft like a little piece of wood or a piece of nylon in the coupler, if you have a coupler. And uh, also that little hose that goes the, runs the length of this, you have to bleed that also. So if you get both of those bled out, then when you put it in, you shouldn't have to have any problems on the trailer itself. So. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's helped somebody. And like I said at the beginning, this helps me document it. So if I have to do this again down the road, hopefully not again, because it's a real royal pain. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And uh, uh, stay tuned. Maybe I'll do something else. <laughs>